Top. Okay. Happy. What's up? What's up, man? I'm good. How are you? All good. All right. It's uh, been a really long while uh, since we uh, had a good talk. Well, I actually just had one. Yeah. But before that, it's I must say I think it's a few years. It's been a few years. Yeah. Like the last time we had a we had a decent talk was even probably in the club. I remember. Where? I don't know. I I think it was um. In, in studio or something, or something. Yeah, in hometown, yeah. yeah, yeah. We talked for like 20 minutes or whatever. And before that, yeah, we go way back, right? So Yeah, well, yeah we just talked about 11, 12 years ago. 11, 12 years. Probably, I think 12, 13 years, because we worked first yeah, a year true. on Muse before music actually came out. Yeah. So I think it like it was like, well, let's say 2006. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, we're old. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're old, I'm not old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's give the people some context because uh, they might know you from several releases uh, from your past. Mm -hmm. They might see your name. Um, but it might be cool to let people know how you actually started. How, okay. how, did, how did things start for you in 2005-06? Well, I started making music, I think, in 2004 or five. So I was 21 at the time. Mm -hmm. It's funny because nowadays it's totally different. They're like 12 years yeah. old and they're already in the studio. 12 years old with their laptops. Yeah. Back in the days, everybody wants to be like, you know, police officer or whatever. And now everybody wants to be a DJ or producer. But yeah, I started when I was uh, 21. <coughs> and I started music uh, at the attic at my parents' home, 21 to 22. Mm -hmm. After that, we met each other. I think we met, you, you came to me... Uh, in my in my residency, cafe out. Yeah, I think you approached me there, like, hey, I make music, and uh, I noticed you playing here. Maybe we could do a collaboration or something. Okay, well, yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's funny. I didn't remember that. Something like that. So yeah, okay, so that happened, and then we uh, we uh, met up for studio. Yeah. So then we had the Joey uh, Suki and Abster era. Yeah, which lasted like what two, three years, or something whatever. like that. And I, I think like that was all at my, at my parents' place in the mm -hmm. studio. You came to me a lot, like, like three, four days a week. Yeah, three, four days a week, taking like the bus in the from, morning from ten o'clock in the morning yeah, till like to six, six, seven o'clock in the in the evening. Making records. Oh, if you think about it, that's crazy. Like that's a crazy amount of time that we spend on learning how to make music, music. because we could already make music in some kind of way but i think in those two to three years we we sp spent so much time in the studio that that's where at least i actually learned how to produce a track yeah like arrangement wise and yeah so did i and and you learned me a lot of stuff and maybe yeah, I, I remember showed you stuff but i remember you were the creative guy like you you got a lot of melodies and ideas mm -hmm. and creative stuff which was my struggle because i knew the the technical part i knew how yeah. to how you were the mixing guy yeah. yeah i knew how those things worked and you didn't have a clue about that so i think that was a nice combination that you came up with the ideas and i managed to make it sound good nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. well if you look back if you listen have you listened to the song yeah i did i actually Fuck. last week i did <laughs> well for that time like 10 years ago it's not that bad though true yeah, that's like, true. And, I, and don't forget, everybody was playing those songs. Plus, it's a different era, different time. Yeah, that's fun because um, after f for the first year, I think we released uh, Bombas in Portuado, the first EP. Wasn't it? Oh, check. check, check. Yeah. yeah that that, that actually one. got released on vinyl as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, on Big, Big Boss Records. Oh, shit, cool. Big Boss Records, yeah. wow. Do, do you still remember that we, we went, went to Amsterdam? We, <laughs> we actually went to the A and R manager to have a to, lunch to the label we manager. To Boscamp. Yeah, to the label manager to have a talk to let him explain us what the agreement actually says because we had we no clue. Had no clue. Oh, yeah, it was our first contract. <laughs> yeah, that was the first contract. I remember going to Marlon, Marlon the bass Yeah, yeah. He was living in uh, the Yeah, so I went to him like, dude, I got my first contract. <laughs> we were celebrating. <laughs> Yeah, was. that was fun. So that's when we signed the first track, Check. Yeah. And then, I think pretty fast after that, we signed the first EP to Sneakers, which to a lot of people right now, they might not know it, but I think that kind of was the start of spinning. Yeah. yeah kind I guess, of. I guess, yeah. 
Yeah. Because that's where all the big guys were signed, like Fede Grant was there, Gregor Salto. Yeah. Uh, you didn't have Spain at that time, yeah? It was. I think it was there, but it was like smaller. Okay. And I think sneakers made it bigger in at least the Netherlands at that in moment. Netherlands, yeah. It gave its first platform there, and then Spinning took it international. I think mm. that's the way it went. Okay. But, uh, we were part of the the first troops <laughs> of of Dutch DJs. Of I Dutch guess. DJs, yes, we were. Of the oh. young Dutch DJs, I guess. So yeah, we did like uh, yeah sneakers, and um, I think from there the first shows in Holland started to come. The sneaker shows. The sneaker shows. Well, I I didn't do that much, but I did like two or three. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got an opportunity to go and play because uh, um, uh, at Nokes Dope. It's one of those uh, 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 one of those big parties in, in Holland. Yeah. Back because in the at, at that same. time, sneakers and Nokes Dope were like the biggest events. Yeah, the biggest events. Possible. But also, um, they were. Shit, uh, um, <laughs> Influencers? No, they were. I forgot the word, but whatever. Um, yeah, so Nopes Dope was uh, a, 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 a kind of a new era for me as well, because mm -hmm. I, I re remember like Quintino, Kennedy, all those guys, you know, being s signed to rock stars because they had yeah. an agency as rock well. Rockstars agency as well, yeah. yeah. Do they still exist? No, I don't think mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, so yeah, so <clears throat> those guys, those guys were s uh, playing my records, so they told the guys who were running rock stars like, yo, Check out this guy, blah blah blah, and then then. So I I fixed an appointment to go and talk, agency wise. It's a booking agency. Booking agency. So I went there, had a good talk, and uh, I kind of got signed with Rockstar's agency for some for some reason. And we had Quintino, we had Bass Jackers, you know, Kennedy, all those guys. I think the reason is pretty clear now, looking back at it, because your your tracks, like our collaborations and your solo tracks, were trending like a lot of people were supporting it a lot of DJs were playing it yeah your names kept popping up everywhere in the charts on dance tunes you know dance tunes dot com dance tunes, yeah. um, and I, I just think your name kept popping up at different places which made you interesting for a booker at that moment especially yeah. when his own artist starts to recommend you yeah a hundred percent and uh, that was that was um, <coughs> the beginning and um, from there, um, oh wait, yeah. So then, I'm uh, Afrojack was also with Rockstars. No oh yeah, yeah, true. And I started to send my music to him because I already did like a lot. I, I was like for a year or a year and a half, maybe two years with Rockstars. Just did the shows. I did shows with sneakers, no piece dope, uh, other other um, uh, venues through all uh, Holland. And then I started to send my music. Uh, then Afrojack started to blow up, and I was like, "Shit, I have to send him my music. He might never know. Maybe we can do something yeah. together." Blah blah blah. So I started to send him my music, and then he, he actually responded and he said, hey, "Yo, this is dope. Do you have more? Send me more." I was like, "Yeah, cool." So I started to work, work, work. Started to send him more, and then he was like, "Yo, this is crazy. Send me more." So I sent it more, and then he loved that one as well, the third one. And then he told me like, "Yo, are you signed or whatever? Or do you have a label or?" I'm like no, I'm I'm a free man, um, and I actually just left uh, rock stars because this was in a timeline of I don't know maybe a few four years, five, no yeah. like a half a year or whatever. Mm. And Rockstar was kind of a, I think it was like a sinking ship or whatever. I don't know they had like things going on, mm -hmm. and um, Afro said, you know what, I want to sign you to my uh, uh, record label called War Recordings. Uh, so I did. And from there, I got signed with uh, his agency, which is uh, Ace Agency, mm -hmm. which is still my agency nowadays. Uh, Afrojack left. He's with uh, Anna. Anna Agency. Right. Um, and this was 2010-11, <coughs> and the Dutch house started to like kind of blow up worldwide, yeah. uh, thanks to guys like Afrojack, Chester, etc. So uh, yeah, I started to um, so I started to tour with Afro. And my first big show was, uh, my first big international thing was uh, traveling to, uh, this was in 2011, traveling to Australia. A tour. And we did the, the Jack tour with Afrojack and it, from there it all kind of started. Yeah. yeah. And um, like you started releasing music on wall as well? Yeah. 
And what what kind of impact did that give you on your uh, career? No, in the beginning, it was a, a, a very good. I mean, you know, well recorded. Arthur was doing it so good with his club records, club records that turn into radio records without without even having the intention being. Yeah. Um. And. Uh, was the <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the impact was of uh, a release Sorry. on wall yeah so uh, the releases on wall were um the impact was um let me check if the camera still on oh. i just continue talking so in the beginning like i said afro was uh, doing very well so the club the, the records that were doing in the beginning very well i must say after the years went by i kind of learned that it maybe it was better for me not to focus on one label yeah why was that i think uh, i compare always myself like w w with bass jackets because i always i me and Marlo basically teach me how to dj so we we started from nothing but yeah. and when i see them they're you doing still remember those parties they threw in the couch yeah i even yeah. Well, I used to do that with Marlon. Yeah. Marlon did the first one and then uh, yeah. it was like yo let's do this together i know a lot of people blah 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 those were like the most it. legendary parties in Clip, time. dude that was the best yeah that was the best those were great times but uh yeah so in my opinion i think it's um if i look back and i only released on 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 um ball recordings i do think it was better for me I mean, it's dope to release some world recordings, but you, you, you focus yourself on one label. I think it's better, like, that's what I, I if I come back, I said, a bass jack is, they used to release on, on world recordings, but also on spinning, uh, on Smash the House, yeah. on Reveal, which means you, uh, within your, 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 um, I mean, if you release music on Reveal or whatever, or Mix Smash, and they have parties on, an ultra or a Tomorrowland, they have stages anywhere, everywhere. Yeah. And if you release on their label, they're gonna book you on their shows as well, which is good for your fan base because you're wouldn't you're you're making everything bigger yeah. and better for you. For me, it was only wall recordings, so it was only wall recordings. Actually, I mean, it was dope, but it's yeah. still only wall wall recordings. But imagine if I would do a reveal and that and this and that, would, my fan base would have been so much bigger. So that's one point I think uh, I would have done um, different. Uh, Mm -hmm. back then and uh, I advise for the people that are watching if you're if you got if you got a track if, or if I mean if somebody wants to sign you don't forget that like average Jack wanted to sign me which like it's crazy you know mm -hmm. but always try to have an understanding and agreement between each other that it's also okay to release music yeah. on other labels to have like an open relationship yeah because I remember that if I would send music to other labels and then it would be like but what do you mean you're with all recordings and I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think it's like not being signed exclusively. That's well, not. yeah, but it's 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 hard though. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but still, in my opinion, I think I did that wrong, and I should have dealt with it differently. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think that um, knowing how we started off, like we only had one option, which was sending music to labels and hoping they would agree with it and and wanted to release it. Mm -hmm. Looking now at the scene with all the options you have, as in self-releasing music, uh, self-promoting it, um, Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, all those options to promote yourself, mm -hmm. do you think it's easier now to be a DJ or to become a DJ, or do you think it became harder? Uh, I think, but I, I think like there are the tools that are getting easier for someone to make music and mm -hmm. to be a DJ. But I think it's, it is harder because there are so many people out there that are trying to be. Yeah, there's so more. How, there's do, you, how do you <laughs> define yourself? How do you yeah. um, show yourself that you're different than what everybody is doing? Mm -hmm. And don't forget, we're it's it's we're ten, twelve, fifteen years later in this EDM scene, uh, which it's kind of you know everything sounds the same. It's very hard to come up yeah. with something that is new, like Matt Martin Garrix did with Animals. You know that was mm -hmm. like, you know, but it's so hard and uh, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I think it's easier for people to, to, and the world is big enough. I mean, there are so many countries, so many continents for us DJs to do stuff, but there are so many like yeah. producers and DJs. So you but, have to really... But, but what if you focus on the group underneath? Because I, I can imagine if you focus on the biggest guys of the of the scene, you know, like Martin Garrix and mm -hmm. Hartwell, of course, that's really, really, really tough to get there. But 
what if you take it one step down to uh, guys who also are doing really well, touring the world, making good money, uh, but just aren't the biggest of the world, you know, like, because there's only like 10 spots available for the biggest of the world. So what if you aim for um, one, one place lower? So you make a decent a decent career and you make a decent uh, salary out of it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that became easier to get booked internationally? Like for instance, when we started, it was almost impossible to get booked internationally. Yeah, I think if you started in the beginning as we started, then it's just still possible. But nowadays it's so hard to get in between that mm -hmm. because those people that are in there are already established and were the guys from back in the days. Mm -hmm. Like once again, base jacket. Mm -hmm. Those are not the biggest one, but they are like one lower, but doing really good touring the yeah, world, number yeah. thirty-five that, that's of the what world. I'm talking about, yeah. And they're doing uh, great, but they build that up during the years. You can't do that nowadays. Just within, it's not about just having a, yeah. a release that that's doing good or whatever. Even if your video has fifty million views, it doesn't mean you're getting you're no, getting shows. Not, yeah. But do you think it's it became like for Marlon and Ralph? It took them. 12 years mm -hmm. to get to the point where they're at right now do you think it's possible to do it quicker right now like maybe let's say four four years five years because the, because the opportunities you have like the the internet helped you a lot social media helps you a lot the ways to promote yourself helped you a lot uh, the option to do self-releases yeah. so if labels are, are holding you back you still have the option to have an output do you think those things will Yeah, but there are a lot of factors that, that should bring you there. I mean, it, that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be, it, it's possible, but it's, it's going to yeah. be hard. Yeah, it's definitely going to be hard. Either it's way, be, left You have to right. have a lot of luck. You have to be, your social media has to be perfect, your looks or whatever. If I, for example, Martin Garrix, of course, his song was like new Great. and yeah. sick and like, whoa, what the fuck is this? But it's all also his young age that is very like attractive to people. They're like, well, he's, he's that young. Let's watch him. He he has a good appearance. Yeah. He yeah. You know, he's like all these factors that would like perfect that Martin the name Martin Garrix. Yeah. And um, boom, you know. Um, if you have all these factors nowadays, it's like I said, it's also luck. I mean, it's not just nowadays. It's not just the music. No, it has to be the way perfect. more. It's, yeah. It's way more, and that's the part that I don't like. I think it's music even became the less interesting part about a music career. Like it's the last thing that's actually yeah, and, and I, but I hate it. Yeah, because right. and I mean, like I'm a producer, and I uh, always work very uh, very hard to get my music out there. Sometimes, um, yeah, you you see people that. Don't make their own music. <laughs> How do you say this correctly? <laughs> yeah, how do I say this correctly? But doing very good. Yeah. Because they have like a big social media or they do stuff on social media that draws attention, which is funny or whatever, or weird. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's very uh, unfair to the guys that are uh, uh, working very hard in the studio and don't get that far. But at the end of the day, that's the business. I mean, I believe yeah. in fake it till you make it. Um, you do believe in it or you don't believe in it? I, I do believe in it. It's not my way of... I okay. don't practice it that way, but I mean, fake it till you make it. There, I mean, you know how it is. There are so many who fake it and at the end of the day make it. Business-wise, it's very smart. Mm -hmm. But for the guys who work very hard and, you know, make the music and make the hours and blah, 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 and don't get that far, just, I can imagine that it's sometimes very, uh, like, a, you know? Yeah, annoying. But uh, that's the game, though. Like, no, no disrespect. I mean, I and respect. How, I respect every way of hustling. And, uh, and how do you, uh, how do you handle that? Like, what, what do you do to. To not worry about those guys or about those things, because it's a it's it happens on a daily basis. You know, you 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 get. Oh, it's, it has to motivate you to do yeah. work even harder and even better. Because, like, like I said at the end of the day, I have respect for everybody. If you fake it till you make it, or if you work hard for it. And you do your own stuff and you make it that's good you know you, you make it till you make it whatever you have to say that so i yeah i respect every uh, yeah. so you just don't pay attention to it or you no try i to... just try to focus on my own thing okay and if i hear something uh, cool like uh, even, if, even if someone make it or made it or not yeah. I, I just respect that and i mean at the end of the day i i, I know who did and who did not and, yeah exactly. and it's not about that even it's 
But no, I just try to focus on myself, work hard, and um, I've got to do it, not somebody else. And I've got a point to prove to myself, not to someone else, you know? True. And let's go to another struggle that which a lot of artists uh, have hmm. and you just told me you have as well finishing music like can, can you give people an in- insight on I, I know that a few of my clients always say like yeah those bigger guys they don't have that problem oh I and I, I always tell everybody they has do. Love, everyone but... has that problem but can you give them a more an insight on how that works for you like is your is your desktop filled with drafts or <laughs> My computer is... I got ADD, so I'm all over the place anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm not uh, hyperactive, but it's more in my head. Mm-hmm. If you're going to see my desktop, it's like... Unorganized. It's, and every, every, every couple of months, I make a new, file, uh, new folder with desktop January 20th, and I put everything in there. Yeah. Which is stupid because sometimes I work in uh, in Fruity and I have my samples on the desktop and then I put them in the thing and then I reopen a Fruity file and then uh, things are missing. Blah, blah, blah. It's one big miss and then I'm eating. Blah, blah, blah. Um, Don't you think it's a shame because I think most of the time with most artists your best tracks never got released because they're still on your laptop. Yeah. I, I do have a lot of stuff that was, in my opinion, very good and they didn't even got released, even stuff with Afrojack. Mm-hmm. Stuff that was supposed to be on his album, but because of things that happened, it mm-hmm. didn't happen anymore or whatever. Um, but yeah, but I have so many, so many things I didn't finish that I think that would do very good. Or very not. Yeah, it's the question you never know. Yeah, but that's the whole quality thing, as in quality subjective. Who defines what quality is? Yeah. You know, to to you it might be shit, but to someone else it, it might, might be the be best dope. track ever. You know, you, yeah. So th- that's the thing. How do you define? When do you decide to release a track? What what's your what's your? Uh, yeah. Well, if I if well if I really love a track, I feel that. Hmm. I I mean I work in a studio where we with bass checkers and we have a holder, um, formerly known as Breeze. Um, so we're there like seven people in the studio. And everybody uh, supports each other, tells each other if something is dope or not dope to finish it or not finish it. Mm-hmm. So there is a very nice atmosphere over there. You know, everybody's loving and nice. And um, if I feel it, I always I always go to like to the next studio to Ralph and uh, and I show it to him, and then he'd be like, mm, "This is not it," or "This is very dope." And sometimes if he says this is not it, I'll just leave it. But sometimes if he says this is not it, but I like it, I'm like whatever, you know. So I just try to finish it, and uh, if we fi- if I fin if I get to a point that I finally fi- finally finished it after three months, <laughs> then uh, and uh, and uh, everybody likes it, and I like it, and I got a good feeling about it. I just try to find for some labels. And when is it finished to you? Because you say after three months it's finished, but when do you decide it's finished? Is it, is it when you put in the last hi hat or is it when you? Yeah, that that's so. Is it? Oh, a it's feeling? a feeling. Yeah, it's, it's like if, it's if, if if of course I listen to a lot of different kind of music, so mm-hmm. I know like how structures are and how everything has to sound, to sound as as one, as a product, a finished product. Is it like a feeling when you just run out of ideas, like when you feel like okay, now I don't hear anything that I want to add or want to delete? So yeah, I think so. It should be finished. If I listen, if if I'm, I think I'm done done and I listen from beginning to the end and I like vibe to it and it's all good and because I listen to it I have to listen to it like a hundred times a day obviously just to know if everything yeah. is like there and cross the T's and dot the I's and whatever but sometimes you have to give up because you can't keep on going especially if you're a perfectionist yeah. or whatever that's the thing I'm that's... not really a per- I am but I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm a weirdo I don't know but um, if I think like yo now now it's cool mm-hmm. Then I just send it out to labels, and from there I hear uh, okay. if they like it or not. You know, and sometimes it's gonna be like I did a, a collab with Bass Jackers, and uh, sometimes I make something and I think, yeah, this is it, or and yeah. then I send it to Ralph, and then he does his thing, and yeah. or he sends to me, I do my thing on it, and, mm. and when we both say, okay, now it's finished, then it's finished, you know? Mm. Yeah, but it, it is hard and it is a struggle. But sometimes, like I said, you have to let go because then you're gonna drive yourself crazy. It's never right, finished. Like, bro, I got so many songs on my on my computer. You don't even want to know. 
But uh, yeah, that's uh, one of the things you have to deal with with being a producer and mm. just try to learn to fucking make, the, make the decisions. Cut the rope. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just have to make the decisions. And um, did you become better at it after like a few years, or is it still something that you keep on struggling with? I think it's something you always will keep on struggling mm -hmm. with. But that you became better at it, like, did, what is it easier now, or did? You what I found out, I also work for other uh, other artists. I make music for them, and um, that if I make something, and in my opinion, it's not finished yet. What's but I it is? but I just send it to them as a preview, and they they'll be like. Yeah. Yo, this is sick. This is perfect. Don't do anything more to it. I'm like, huh? But what? Yeah. You know? So it's, it's. And that's the thing I mean with quality subjective, as in, in your mind, it could be unfinished, but to someone else, it might be the best track ever. ever. Yeah. You know? So it's. it's well, really I think, like, huh? Well, what do you mean? It's not even. I need to put a hi hat yeah. and left and a. You know? Yeah. Like, I have to. They're like, no, no, no. Less is more. You have to do, do, do not too much, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it's for everybody's different, you yeah. know. So how do you decide for yourself? I would say you just, at least that's the thing I always advise to people, like just make music you like yeah. in the way you think it's best. Yeah. Don't really care about what other people think of it. No, 100%. You have to do what you want. They have their own opinions, you know? like they have their own tastes, they have their own opinions. They they look different to the same song as you do. Yeah. But that's the beauty of all yeah. at the end of the day. It's the same with art, you know, like I can look at a piece of art and say it's shit. But someone else might pay the ten thousand euros for it. Yeah. So and that's the same. So that's the same Shooting with music. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's so interesting to me. Like why? Why? Why people keep unfinished, not finished tracks? You know, like what? Why would you come up with an idea and not finish it? To me, it's just a lost opportunity. Yeah, it is. But you know. Unless you really it's, get stuck in the project, you know, like if you really get stuck in not knowing how to finish it, like not knowing how what kind of break it should be. Yeah, yeah, but I have to, I have that a lot, though, and then I'm making something, but I have no, it sounds dope, but I have no idea, idea what direction I'm, I'm, I'm going. Yeah. So that's why sometimes I just leave it and start working on something new because I don't want to uh, spend my day working on something that I know that it's not that I don't know where, which way it's going. So yeah. I have to. Nowadays, you have to make your hours like worth it. And if you feel like this is not going to be it, don't waste it on that. And then I start yeah. something new. Because I would say the more you make, the bigger the chance something's big is going to be in there. Yeah. So, yeah, the more ideas you make. If you make like seven uh, uh, short ideas, you pick the best one and then you move on from there instead mm -hmm. of make, finishing all seven. seven so it's trial and error for you. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. It's fun to see how everyone has his own... Um, production process. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, everybody has his own thing. Like, because, like you mentioned, and I'm I'm the same as you. And I'm not that perfectionist. I just don't really care about those details, and I'm a bit lazy. So, I was so I, I was pretty quick saying it was finished because I was done with the track. Mm -hmm. I just didn't felt like finishing it of keep shaping it more and more because it's good enough. You know, no. good enough was good for me. I was I would think that too, but I I you know I've been. Six seven years with Afro and I, in his house we had studios for us. We would sleep there the whole week and then every day and we would fucking work in the studio. Yeah. And I would sense that you know yeah no, I would sense of no more details more this more that. So I'm kind of kind of maybe. Yeah. Kind of used to somebody saying to me like yo, should be more in it. Yeah. Or one thing I always hated. He was like Afro was like Uppy. What song do you like? And I would show him the song, whatever, maybe it was Calvin Harris at that point, the, a, a hit, whatever. I'm like, this is sick. He would, would, would be like, okay, try to try to uh, remake and rebuild this exactly the same. So, But I was like, why? The song is already existing. He was like, no, just listen to it. What are they doing? The arrangements, the sounds, how how is it EQ'd? What's yeah. the, the, the level of it? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, really? Well, why would I spend time on something that's not going to be released anyway? And I used, and, and I did it, and then the day after, uh, I would send it to him or whatever, and he would say, uh, oh, "Cool or not cool or change it, blah blah blah." So I would do that very often, and, and it's funny because I, I like I said I hated that, but now if I look back, it learned me to 
rebuilt exactly of every song. Yeah. I, I, if somebody tells me I want a hip hop production and it got to sound like this, it yeah. gives me a reference. That's for me the best because that's the way I've learned to produce. It's like you learned uh, the basics of the of the track, you know, like yeah. Oh, you learn on what sounds they used, how they used it, how to balance everything, and and like I said, I hated it, but now I look yeah. back at it. Thank you, because it's it learned me a lot. It learned me, it showed me a lot how to how to how to produce music in a certain way. You know? I, I still remember that I had to remake uh, "Leave This World Behind" I, at school, at music school. At that moment, one of the first tasks that we got was remaking a song because you're supposed to learn a lot from it. And I was in it the same way you was like, fuck that, I'm not gonna make remake a song. It's just a waste of my time. Yeah. But I learned a lot from uh, remaking the sounds because then I noticed like, okay, wait a minute, they're not layering that much. Like it's just yeah. one clean sound processed well and that's it. Yeah. And so instead of the bass and how did they side chain it and then exactly, yeah. And it's a lower or whatever and you want to call it. It's a shitty job. Like, like it's I hate it. I hated it, but I learned a lot from it. You you learn from it a lot, yeah. technically. It's a great tip. I think that's something people can definitely use. People have to use that for sure. And they uh, uh, tutorials on YouTube, you can find everything. Yeah. Sometimes I'm struggling with something and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Just go fucking to YouTube. And, yeah. Oh, sorry for swear. Uh, go, to YouTube, <laughs> go to YouTube and just search what you're trying to learn and you'll learn it. Yeah. I, that's learned, the difference as well. When we started, there were, we're no tutorials. That, no, bro, now it's full of tutorials. I, Sometimes I'm checking like, how do I make an 808 sound better if I'm making a hip hop production? Yeah. Dude, all these, I follow this genius, I'm a very big hip hop fan and I follow the uh, genius, this, this, um, they have a channel on YouTube and they show like um, big hip hop uh, records and they're gonna like, uh, uh, um, later. Uh, they're gonna the, dissect. dissect the song. So they're gonna show the project and how they did everything and tips and tricks. I learned so much from that yeah. just watching those video things. Can't imagine, yeah. They, I would see, I would see if they were work on a Fruity Loops project, and I would freeze the thing because I saw what he did on his uh, oh, on his yeah. channel, and I would like do that as well and try it, and you know. And I'm like, whoa! It's that. Yeah. So that's a way to um, to learn uh, to learn stuff. Everything is out there. I mean, if you and that's if you're, so if, you're if you're at home and you want to know how you cook something, you just go Google yeah. and you find it. It's the same that's with so music. That's so crazy to me, and that's why I think it became a bit easier for someone to become an artist right now because all the secrets are out there. Like mm -hmm. when we started, you had to figure it out yourself, and nobody would give you tips and tricks. No. Huh? Nobody would give you. People certain were protecting samples. their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how did you make that kick? Fuck you! Fuck you know? you. Like, you I'm, I'm not gonna tell you. Her. Right oh, now, the kick from Hardwell sounds sick. I need that one. Can you give it to me? No, man. They give. They told me not to give it to anyone. I can't give it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how it went. And right now, it's just Google or Splice, yeah. and some guy on this planet remade it, and it's online. It's you know? online, and it sounds good. Uh. And it sounds really good, you know. So I think those things definitely became easier, and especially like if you're um, struggling with production. Like last week, I was sitting with a client, and something was changed in Logic. I couldn't find a certain function. And I was like, what the, where, where the hell is that button, you know, yeah, it yeah, just yeah. disappeared. And then I started thinking, and I started searching, and while I was searching, I was thinking like, why am I not Googling this? It's yeah. like, and then the first hit, ping, there's the button. Yeah, okay, it's like, thanks guys, one minute. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Sometimes I spend like two hours, and then I find out, oh wait, I can Google, you know, so yeah, I spend that's two like hours the, for, for what? I guess that's our prehistoric mind working. Like doing I, it the old school way. I do think so, yeah. We're old fuckers. We are. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, um, older, I'm older than you, though. So you're like, damn. Yeah, yeah. but we're still young. I, at least I still feel young. Me I, too, me too. I really, I really see, like, I just, uh, well, just, I'm 30 for half a year now. And I think I'm still the same kid as I was 21 years ago. Same well, year. not 10 years ago, but... Uh, it's just that my body maybe became a bit older, even though I don't notice it. But I think I'm in the prime of my life right now, body-wise and mind-wise. Nice. At least that's and mind wise yes, body-wise. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It, Give me a few weeks. I'm back at the gym. Yeah, sure. If you uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> if you have a look back at the, after your career, what's the biggest takeout you you got from it? My biggest takeout, as in. The, the thing you're never doing wrong again. I think uh, sticking to one... One company. Yeah. One label. Hmm. 
I think, I think that's, that's smart. Like I, like I said earlier, if you spread your things, your your yeah. fan base will be so so much bigger. Because <clears throat> all these guys, like for me, it was Afro. It was only Afro, 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 Afro. So you're, you know, it was dope. I mean, like no, it's cool. Yeah. But I like to have Hardwell, Dimitri, Nikki, just yeah. this, that, the, the. Imagine being posted on their social medias or playing on yeah. their festivals or playing on their stages. Other people are gonna see you. You're gonna expand your 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 fan base. You're gonna expand. You know, people are gonna see you, interest you. Even if they didn't hear your music, they would say like, "Oh, I know him from I saw him play there." That's 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 the way to do it, and I I uh, do regret it. Or, I mean, it's a lesson. I I know it now. And uh, advice uh, uh, other aspiring DJs producers to yeah. do that different. I mean, it's good to be signed to one label, but always have an, an like a, agreement between each other that you're okay to release uh, music somewhere else. Because mm. that would be good, better for your career, hundred percent. For your own career, yeah. yeah. Cool. I want to thank you for your time, man. Thanks for coming over. Good seeing Thanks you. Thanks for again. having me. Good no seeing problem. you again as well. It's been a long time. Long time friend. Yeah. My man. And uh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>